Taiwan is not exactly where you'd expect to find the world's first off-road electric hypercar, but that's exactly where the prototype for that type of car was built, and it used the Super GT GT300 mother chassis as its basis. This is the story of Miss R, a car from Zing Mobility, but to tell the story of Miss R, we have to start off with the Zing NMD000E sports prototype, better known as Miss E. The Taiwanese company was keen to get involved in motor racing, starting some work on a new sports prototype car built to the FIA CN regulations, with the aim of using it in a one-make championship. The tubular steel chassis has, to my eye, at least some similarities with a radical SR3 frame, but the car was quite a lot wilder to look at. Partway through the car's development, Zing's management heard about the new LMP3 category and wanted to get involved, but it struggled to get hold of the regulations, and I think it didn't really understand how the chassis homologation process worked. Worked. Suggestions to use the Dome LMP3 design came to nothing as Dome had dropped its LMP3 project, and besides, by the time Zing did get the regulations for LMP3, other manufacturers had already rolled out the new cars. It carried on development with Miss E, and at least two cars were built, but there was a major change in direction for the project. Instead of being a conventional sports racing car, Zing decided to install an electric powertrain that it developed itself. This featured 3,240 lithium-ion cells arranged in 108 separate modules, and it was this that Zing wanted to focus on. The car could be fully recharged in half an hour at 50 kilowatts. The projected range of the car was about 10 to 20 laps depending on the circuit, but essentially a full race at competition speed, just right for a local one-make series. Note the interesting front suspension arrangement here. The first shakedown run of the car took place on the aircraft runway next to Penn Bay Circuit in the south of Taiwan. The front wing is remarkable. It looks almost like a rear wing mounted backwards on the front of the car. I'm not quite sure how much aerodynamic development was done on this car, but the company claimed this car's projected top speed was 288 to 300 kph, but looking at the car I find that highly unlikely. However, the Miss E project highlighted a couple of issues for Zing Mobility. Firstly, it lacked the ability to develop a modern composite chassis, we'll get back to that, but more importantly, it realised that there was a lack of availability of small off-the-shelf EV battery packs. For high volume or high budget projects, companies could turn to various companies. There was a lot of choice for custom battery packs, but for low volume projects, there were very few options out there. Zing decided that it wanted to create a range of off-the-shelf powertrain parts that any low-volume car maker could realistically access. It set out to become the Cosworth of electric motorsport, ignoring the fact that Cosworth is trying to be the Cosworth of electric motorsport. It developed its own battery system as a result. This new stackable modular battery system consisted of small packs of 42 lithium-ion cells which were fully sealed and liquid-cooled. It also partnered with a motor supplier to achieve the goal of being able to offer a complete powertrain to customers. Zing wanted to use the car to promote its modular battery packs, which it described as being stackable like Lego bricks. To showcase this new product lineup, Zing decided to build an all-new car to demonstrate its new product, and the person in charge of the project had dreamed of owning a Ford RS200, and took inspiration from that car for the new project, which was internally known as the RS300. It later became known as Miss R. The idea was to create an electric rally car which would be perfectly usable on road as a high performance daily driver. The idea was not outrageous and the argument was that you can't use most high performance cars off road, whereas this rally car inspired project would be fine on or off the road. As Zing couldn't make its own composite chassis, it turned to Japanese company Dome, as it had heard about an off the shelf chassis that Dome made. This was in fact the GT300 mother chassis used in Super GT racing cars like the Dome Toyota 86 and the Mooncraft Lotus Evora. Dome had designed the mother chassis so that small independent car tuners and racing teams could develop their own racing cars for Super GT or any other championship or sports cars for use on the road. It's actual original design purpose to be able to build it up without having all of the specialist skills, knowledge and facilities needed to build a modern composite chassis. There's a detailed video on this process in the link above. When Dome first heard about the project, it's fair to say they were a bit shocked about what Zing wanted to do. The mother chassis had been designed for road use in the first place, but not 
off-road use. Despite this, they decided to proceed with the prototype and agreed to supply a mother chassis to Zing. The car was built up around the dome mother chassis, a concept which had been designed with EV cars in mind, but it was primarily a GT300 Super GT project. The Zing project didn't require the full GT300 package. Instead, the car would use the mother chassis tub at its core. The battery pack would sit in a secondary sub-chassis with a range of modules in the floor, with a larger box mounted at the rear of the mother chassis tub. Here's a nice image of the battery packs being arranged in the lower sub-chassis. On the front of the rear of the mother chassis, Zing opted not to utilise the dome sub-chassis and instead machined its own front and rear chassis elements. The original design documents called for a carbon fibre rollover structure, you can see that in this animation. I've seen proposals for composite roll cages before, but I'm not entirely convinced by this one. I can't quite understand why Zing didn't just use the dome design here. The car was fitted with four motors, one for each wheel. Braking was via a conventional AP racing system. Combined with the electric motor regeneration capacity, the stopping power of the car should have been pretty potent. Much of the initial testing was done without the body work fitted, allowing us to get a good look at the layout of the car. Note the carbon fibre rollover structure has been probably sensibly replaced with a tubeless steel structure here. The first shakedown was in a car park before more serious running was undertaken. Still, with the bodywork not yet fitted, the car was subjected to some more proper track testing before it was benchmarked against a Porsche 911. The results of that are unclear, but it was also quite wonderfully benchmarked against the Land Rover Defender, and the Zing car performed quite well it's fair to say. Finally, with the bodywork fitted, some on-road and off-road testing was conducted in picturesque locations. Now, while it may not be the prettiest mother chassis car, it was certainly distinctive. In terms of performance, what the car could really do was never entirely clear. While the battery pack was claimed to produce one megawatt of power coming from 98 Zing modules with a total of 4,116 cells, whether it ever actually ran at that capacity isn't clear. And rather than invest in a fast charging setup, Zing opted to make the complete battery pack swappable in five minutes, though probably this wasn't a job you were going to do at home yourself. The stated objective for Zing was to make a car which would sell for about a million US dollars, and Zing thought it could produce about 10 cars a year, though I'm not entirely sure any cars beyond the prototype were ever made. The prototype was widely used by Zing, and I think it probably still is, as a promotional tool at shows, and it's being used primarily to highlight its battery cooling technology. And this approach seems to have worked, as Zing has struck a deal with Caterham Cars to supply this technology to its forthcoming Project V electric sports car. I think that the Caterham looks great, and I think it could make the basis of a great GT300 car, especially if the new rumoured mother chassis is introduced by GTA. Don't forget that Kazuo Takahashi owns Caterham Cars, and he was responsible for the existence of not only the mother chassis Lotus Evora, but also the Mooncraft Shiden at GT300. Now imagine a new Caterham GT300 car, maybe a Mooncraft or Tokyo R&D version, and it's notable that the latter has played a key role in the development of the new Caterham. If that happens, and it's a big if because nobody's actually confirmed if there is a new mother chassis coming, even if all of that happened, maybe the original generation mother chassis would have helped develop technology for the next generation, though electric Super GT really doesn't seem likely, does it? If you've enjoyed this electric tale of engineering from the Pacific, then don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon somewhere in the pit lane.